In this video, we'll get an introduction to HTML5. So the lessons in this video are pulled from my course, Pure HTML and CSS from Scratch, as I thought these were the most helpful lessons for somebody just getting started. So I'll link to that course as well as my HTML email course in the video description. And if you end up liking the video, remember to subscribe for new HTML email related tutorials. So HTML5 is the latest version of HTML, as you may have guessed, and has been the standard since 2014. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and the classic definition of hypertext means text that can link to other text. Back when web pages didn't really have any styling, now we can think of it as web pages linking to other web pages. And markup language means that we use readable tags for our HTML to make our content visually distinguishable and easy for us to understand the meaning of. So a standard HTML tag is comprised of an opening tag on the left, a closing tag on the right with the forward slash inside of the tag, and the content in between the two tags, which makes up an entire HTML element. So with this brief introduction, let's go grab a text editor in the next lesson so we can start writing our HTML. Now that you have the basics down of what HTML means and what an HTML tag is made up, the next step is to add a text editor to your computer. So I'm not going to go over the complete installation and setup as well as a text editor tutorial here, but I'll link one in the video description so you can learn how to get your HTML document set up on your computer and open up that document in your web browser with Google Chrome as an example. So now let's go over what's included and necessary in every HTML document before we can start writing out our HTML. Okay, so let's start off by adding a left angle bracket, then an exclamation point, and this is going to show us the doc type text. So once we hit enter, Visual Studio Code is going to fill this out for us, which will tell the web browser that the type of document we're setting up is HTML. So this is basically seen as information for the web browser instead of an HTML tag, even though we're using the left and right angle brackets. So now we can add our first real HTML tag by writing HTML, then hitting enter. And the HTML tag itself is known as the root element, which contains all other tags and elements in the document. Next, we have the head tag of the document, which is where we add all of the important information that we want to tell the web browser for how we want our web page to display. So the content inside of the head document won't be visible on the web page. The visible content will be inside of the body of the document using the body tag. So everything inside of the body tag will be able to see on the web page, as you see when I type hello, and then I'll just refresh to get live server working again. So as I said, this is where all of our visible content will be for our web page, though later we'll learn in the course that we can add hidden content here as well that doesn't display on the web page. So with our doc type declaration, our root HTML tag, our head section, and body section, this is the core of every HTML document. So even though we can use this and this is perfectly fine for us to get started, what I'd like to do instead is show you the HTML5 boilerplate for the document type that Visual Studio Code provides for us. So if we go and type out HTML again, we'll have this option where it says HTML colon five. So I want you to highlight that and hit enter or select it with your mouse. And this is gonna show us the boilerplate, as I said, which means pre-prepared content that's commonly used. In this case being the core HTML document type, tags, and metadata as well as a title that's recommended for every HTML document for compatibility across web browsers. So in the complete course I mentioned linked in the description, we'll go over these tags completely, but for now we're going to move on to creating our first HTML tag being a paragraph. So I'm going to add the P character here and then hit enter. And this will give us our opening and closing tags for the paragraph with the letter P. Now we can add some text, so I'll add this is a paragraph. 
So now that we know how to create an HTML tag, let's move on to what I think is the most important part of knowing HTML before moving on to CSS, which is HTML attributes. And this will set us up for the next lesson in this video as well, covering classes and IDs, which we can use to connect our HTML and CSS. So HTML attributes come in a pair of the name of the attribute and its value as we've covered previously. So this is going to be a bit of a refresher lesson as we look back at some of the attributes and their values that we already covered in the head section of our HTML document, as well as the HTML tag itself, where we have language and English up at the top. So the language at attribute and then English or EN as the value. So I'm going to paste this paragraph definition of attributes from the completed version of this lesson inside of a paragraph tag. And let's drop down to a new line to get a refresher with a link inside of a paragraph tag. So I'll add the P tag for our paragraph. And then this is a space and then the anchor tag or a tag for the link. And then I'll add a link to Google once again. Then make it open up in a new tab with target as the attribute and the value underscore blank. Then I'll add Google link as the text. And then the period outside of the link text. So let me get it opened up in Chrome here where we have our Google link. So in this example, we've used two different attributes. We use the hyperlink reference attribute with our value as the URL to google.com. And then we have the target attribute with our value underscore blank, opening up our web page in a new tab. So as another example, we covered the IMG image element with its attribute of source, with the value being the file path to the image file. And we also covered the title attribute, so we can have title text appear on top of the image with the value or the text we add as the value, so image title, in addition to the alternative text attribute. So I'll add alternative text as its value to display if the image doesn't appear. And for our image, we also added the width attribute where we can add a width for the image in pixels or percentage. So default it's pixels with 200 pixels as the width. And then we can also use height and add 200 pixels as the height. And we also got a quick introduction to CSS by using the style attribute where we can add CSS styling as the value. So in this example, I'll add a border to our image with border two pixel in width and then solid red. So we have a solid red border that's two pixels in width and we'll cover borders later in our CSS section. We can also add a border radius to round the corners of our image. So if we add a border radius of 50% and we have a square image that's going to make it circular. Then lastly, let's add some heading text. So I'll add a heading three then let's add the style attribute once again to give it a little CSS styling with color as the CSS property, then colon and red as the CSS value, ending with the semicolon. And our red heading three text will be the conclusion of our HTML attributes refresher lesson. In this lesson, we'll learn about ID and class attributes, which are used to identify HTML elements for CSS, as well as other development languages outside of HTML, like JavaScript and PHP. So the ID attribute is used to represent only one element on a page. So for example, we would have a different ID attribute for the red color shirt and the blue colored shirt while class attributes can represent multiple elements on a page. So this would be the background color that we're seeing for the boxes or the black text that's underneath the blue and red shirt text. So we can use classes and IDs with any type of HTML element, but we're going to use the div element or division HTML content element, also known as a divider, which I like to call it which is a universal HTML element to contain content. So the Visual Studio Code text editor makes it really easy for us to add IDs to elements. So if we just use the hashtag and then write box 
and hit enter, now we have a division content element with the ID attribute named box. So another ID shortcut we can use with any element, but I'll use the div here, is to write div, then the hashtag for the ID, then hit enter, or you could just name the ID after the hashtag and hit enter. So now we have the same div ID named box. So alternatively, we could do the same using a period instead of a hashtag for a class. So to add a class attribute, we would just add period followed by the name of the attribute we want. So box would give us div class box. So for this activity with our two boxes containing the red shirt and blue shirt, instead of using div ID box, we'll use div class box because we have two elements that we'll want to use the same CSS styling for. So this div class box will contain the first box with the off-white background and the red shirt heading text. So next let's add that heading text and we're going to use a h1 or heading 1 and we're going to give this an ID because we're just going to have one instance of this with the name red. And then I'll add the red shirt text as the heading 1 text to match the practice activity on the left. So now all we should have showing up in Chrome is the red shirt heading one text. So now we can add the paragraph text beneath to match with the P tag and then the text above is red. Then we'll drop down beneath the closing div tag and add a new div class with the name box. So we'll have our second div class box element which will contain the blue shirt and paragraph text. So we'll add the heading one next with the ID blue instead of red because there's just one instance of this. Then I'll add the paragraph text underneath where it says the text above is blue. And now we're ready for some CSS styling. So the CSS styling that we've used so far in the course has been in line using the style attribute. Here though, we'll get a preview of the next section of the course by using the style tag in the head section underneath our title. So I'll drop down and add the text style, then hit enter and that's going to give us an opening and closing style tag to add our CSS. So previously we've added the style inline instead of internal above. So the inline styling would be using the attribute and then adding a background color as an example where we can just apply that to the element where we're adding the style attribute. But with internal styling, and later in the CSS course we'll also learn about external styling, we can apply that same style to all the classes. So we'll need to use the period to select an element with the class and then we'll add the class name. So it'll be period box, which is going to select both of the div class box elements. Then our CSS styling will be inside of opening and closing curly brackets. So I'll add a background color with the color that I've selected called antique white. So now if we go take a look in Chrome, once this is added, we'll see that we have that antique white background color displaying for both of our elements with the class attribute named box. So we're able to select any and all instances of that class name, no matter what element it's attached to, and add CSS styling to it. So we can change the background color, the color of the text, and as we'll learn in the CSS section, we'll be able to add much more styling changes than this. So now let's move on to styling our IDs. So as we mentioned, IDs should only be applied to a single element or represent one element on a page. So we'll style the red shirt ID first using the hashtag followed by the attribute name which is red. So hashtag red opening and closing swirly brackets to add our CSS styling and then color red as the CSS property and value that we'll cover, as I keep saying, in the next section. So now let's add the blue ID styling with hashtag blue to select that element. And we'll add our opening and closing CSS styling brackets in addition to the color property and value blue. So lastly, what I'm going to do is add a little bit more CSS styling to the box class to match the finished version here where we have two boxes displaying next to one another with some spacing around them. So I'll kind of flex some CSS skills before we learn about them completely here. 
So let's add the width to the box. So I'll add 50%. And this is going to span half the page, but I'll actually use 48%. So there's room for some margin as we'll learn to, to add spacing on either side of the box. Then I'm going to add float left, which is going to get them sort of pulling to the left and aligning next to one another instead of displaying at the full width of the page. Then I'll add some spacing outside of the box background color with margin 1% as opposed to padding spacing, which would be inside of the background color of the box. Then lastly, with them spaced apart, I'll add text align center, which is going to clean up the text and make the text appear in the center of the box. So that does it for the practice activity. And I'm going to copy the, um, the paragraph text that was included here just to match the lesson version that I prepared so it matches the progress file attached to this lesson. So once you master the IDs and classes, which we just covered and are pretty easy as you can see, you'll be able to easily apply the CSS styling to your content. And once you are familiar with a bunch of different CSS properties and values, you'll be able to lay out your content really however you want as you'll learn in our projects. So this has been our introduction to HTML. Stay tuned for my next lesson on the channel introducing us to CSS and check out the courses in the video description. I'll see you in the next video.